If you're hearing this broadcast, you too have survived the eclipse. The Illuminati did not tickle your butthole, and so you're here to enjoy Monday afternoon with us. There was no aliens. There was no rapture. It was a whole big nothing burger. All that happened here in Georgia. I don't know how it was for you over there in Maine, but here in Georgia, it was like for maybe like 30 minutes, it felt like the sky was like slightly tinted, and then it just went away. So yeah, that was pretty I, much our experience. I was in like the the all but total eclipse space, and so it got mm -hmm. like night for mm, four, two or three, four minutes, and then it wasn't night, and that was it. And that was it was just like a it was there was like an, a surround sunrise because the atmosphere yeah. was still getting the, the light and that was that it was over and i was for, like for, for like for us it was basically like putting on a pair of shades like indoors for, for yeah a, a yeah little, 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 i wear my sunglasses at night effect yeah yeah, yeah kind of <laughs> like really that good. yep and uh that was that was that that was the end of that and you know i was disappointed no digimon came through i was honestly expecting my otis mon to crawl through the hole in the moon but whatever in uh in brighter news though uh we do have well i wouldn't say brighter but i guess um news to talk about <laughs> we, we do, do have, have things that happen we do have things that happen and speaking of things that happen the bafta poll uh bizarrely names tomb raider protagonist lara croft is the most iconic character in video game history period really the end Yep. Like in all video games history? Well, it, it, yeah, exactly. It says right here. It says most iconic video game kister, his, in character of all time. So that means there won't be another one in the future either. That's it. Laura Croft's the end. There will never be another. So I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I can see if you're on the same lane with me. When I hear, you know, most iconic video game character of all time, my top two that I tend to gravitate towards, or even three, I guess you can throw it out there if you want to throw an arcade, would be like, I don't know, Sonic, Mario, Pac-Man for like yeah. old school arcade fans. Like those are probably the, the top three that would come to my mind. I don't think Laura Croft would be on that list. I'm not saying that she would be like low or off the list entirely, but I don't think she's nowhere near number one. Well, and that that's what the most curious thing about this is, because you're not wrong about Sonic being part of that, but this whole thing is just so out there. I, I thought Spencer had one in the... I'm sorry, I'm just, I thought I had the, uh, he had it in the article, that's why I gotta go dig it up. Um, where? Back to the game. <laughs> oh, this dang it. I'll, I can't just find it right say, now. I'm sorry, is, guys. I was about to say, is this image of uh, Laura Croft in her, her glory days? Is this still allowed on the internet, or is this too male gazy for for uh, modern day video game fans? It's. Uh, I think it's probably too male gazy. Honestly, when you think when you see what they actually compared it to here, that I finally dug up. I'm very sorry this took so long, fellas. So here it is, and ladies. <laughs> so. Uh, we have Laura Croft over here. Mario in number two again. This is the one that threw me. Yeah, bald 47, guy. Really, bald guy. Yeah, like, that threw is, me. Is, is Hitman considered like top ten most iconic video games of all time? Really, is, like, is Hitman considered the top ten anything at all? Like, I, I mean, just don't, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I I like the Hitman games. Like I said, I would not put that that high on the list. Well, and again, like here's Sonic at number four. And again, like I'm still beside myself about that. We've got Sackboy. I don't, has there been a little big planet game in the last decade? I don't uh, remember. I don't, I, I can't. Did the PS5 I mean, even get one? The, 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 the Sackboy one, I probably wouldn't argue too much because there's, there are just a lot of weirdo little big planet fans out there. So, I mean, I, I guess I can give that one a pass. And, I think generally we agree with like the other ones being on the list, like Link. Obviously, Zelda has a uh, big following. Pac-Man we mentioned earlier. Halo, you could throw Halo in there as well. But yeah, I don't understand the the connection here with either what is it, uh, Forty Seven or Laura Croft. That just seems a little yeah. But here's here's Pikachu all the way to hell down here. Pikachu's the most I would say Ron. You got like Ronald McDonald, Jesus yeah. Christ, Santa Claus, and then Pikachu. <laughs> Like that, I think that in the order of what children recognize. So here's Pikachu all the way down here. And bizarrely, even lower than that is Solid Snake. Like, how did Snake fall under Halo? How did how that is, happen? How is, oh, I'm sorry, how does Boulder Gate 3 on a higher ground than Pokemon? 
Exactly. How, how did I, that there, happen? There, Arthur Morgan, a, a, a obligatory cowboy. <laughs> is this this list like collaborated by like a, a thirty five year old like sea of like cackling white hens? Is this? I feel like that if they you put a room of them together and ask them to come up with the most iconic video, this is probably the list that they would come up. With. Ellie, Ellie from the last. Really? Yeah, Ellie from the Last of Us. Yeah, not. I'm not even kidding. Like I get Steve, I get Snake, I crash, I question. Why is Boner like, Gate three on here twice? Exactly. Yeah, that's another one. Like there's there's okay. clearly a bias, but this is the British poll, by the way. This is for Brits. So apparently, over in Britain, Lara Croft is big news, very big news over in Britain. I would not know because unlike uh, Pikachu, there is not like uh, a bunch of. Um, paraphernalia going around of Laura Croft. I don't see Laura Croft on billboards. I don't see little plushies of Laura Croft in the grabber machines. But everywhere I go, I see can Pikachu. I see can Pikachu everywhere I go. I mean, we, we do have to keep in mind here that like Britain is kind of like bizarro America. So maybe in their little alternate universe that they've created over there, that maybe I, I can see this being a past, but here in the United States, absolutely not. That's the only thing that I can say. I mean, are, are these like so? Put it in the context here that we're talking about, like Britain, that we're talking about England, essentially here. Are these characters really that iconic in the UK that it would justify this list? Because this is such a mismatch to what reality is. But I guess you can make the argument. It's like, well, you guys are in the US. This is how it is over here. It's like, is it really that big over there? Am I, am I missing something here? Yeah, I think so bad. In, in Britain, that uh, polygonal boobs are the biggest news you've got. Is that? Oof. I don't know, fellas. Might be time to pack it in. Might be time to oh, pack God. it in. But speaking of packing it in, Dwayne The Rock Johnson admits that Biden may not have been a great choice after all. May not have been a great choice after all. No. Well, here's the thing. He, he came out recently. So WrestleMania happened this weekend, just in case you guys well, didn't know. It was WrestleMania weekend. They were in Philadelphia. The Rock was a big part of both night one and night two because WrestleMania is two nights now because the reasons and money. And before WrestleMania came out, he did this interview with Fox News, just completely random. Like, I don't know what random. Fox News has to do with, with, with wrestling, but... He came out and he did this interview where he's basically trying to be like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, I endorsed Joe Biden, you know, several years ago. I probably definitely won't do that again. And it's in the context of what he's saying here. They'll try to portray it as like, oh, he regrets uh, supporting the Democrats in 2020. He's like, that's not what he said. He said he regrets supporting Biden. And what you've seen here is over the course of the last few weeks, there's been this narrative shift in the left wing media. You've seen this with like the Daily Show and with um, Trevor Noah, not Trevor Noah, uh, who's the other dude, the late like dude, uh, John Seth Meyers. Yeah, yeah, him, Seth Meyers, Kimmel, uh, a whole bunch of other guys are now switching this narrative now because they understand Alan. that. Look. That, yeah, him, him too. Oh, God. But uh, they realize that Biden is not exactly likable, that there is an election problem with Biden. So somebody brought up a pretty good argument here that they may be in the course of the next few months trying to slide Biden out of the picture here for the 2024 election. In the course of doing that, who knows? It could be the ultimate October surprise of what happens if they get somebody else? What happens if they prop up Michelle Obama? What happens if they prop up, you know, Kamala Harris? What if they pop up somebody who's like, well, the, the primaries is over, but Joe just can't do it anymore. So here's our new person. And then all these people were like, oh, I can't stand Biden. I don't like Biden. Just like that. They'll be like, oh, Michelle Obama, I can't wait. I'm uh, now I'm now I'm all in on the Democrat side. Like there's this this all this is calculated. Rock has right. obviously taken a, a lot of hits over the last uh year and a half in his public image. He got Since called the out thing. Oh, even before that, this the Maui thing was a big black eye. The whole thing with Oprah was a black eye. Uh, the whole Joe Rogan situation, if you remember what happened with him and Joe Rogan, uh, when Rogan was getting canceled a few years ago because they were saying that, oh, he's telling people to take horse dewormer. He's getting people killed, right? And then all of a sudden, they tried to go at him and then Rock threw him completely under the bus by saying, oh, well, he said some racist joke that I wasn't aware of, so I'm not going to associate with this guy anymore. So a lot of people have come to accept that The Rock is basically a Hollywood sellout, and this is a, how they view him as now. So he's trying to repair that image by getting back in you know, the good graces of the people that he scorned, but he's still trying to do it in this very PR Hollywood way where everyone knows it's fake, 
But I think in his bubble, wherever the Hollywood bubble he's put himself into, he still mm. thinks that this is his way of regaining trust with the people. And it's like, it's too late for that. Like, they've seen over the course of the last eight years, you are, in fact, a left-wing Democrat shill. Like, you supported uh, Elizabeth Warren. You supported um, uh, Michelle Obama, obviously. You supported uh, Biden, Kamala Harris. It's like, you pretty much all in the tank for these people and notice what he didn't say it's not like he said that oh well you know i'm more leaning towards you know, like republicans or i'm not even thinking about uh trump in 2020 he just says no i'm just not going to uh, endorse yep. uh anyone for for 2024 so it's not like he's changed his side he just understands that his popular his position is no longer popular he's trying to switch back to it essentially yeah, exactly. And this is, you know, like you said, it was calculated, but also this guy is trying desperately to separate his two personas. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but he yeah. wants you to really engage with The Rock, not Dwayne The Rock Johnson, not Dwayne Johnson, rather. Yeah. He wants you to interact with The Rock, not that. So that's what he's doing is he's trying to illustrate that Dwayne Johnson has no opinion about these things. The Rock may be cooking something, though. You know, and yeah. that's what he's trying to do. Is... And keep in mind, he literally just got the um the the rights back to his name, The Rock, because he just became a board member for WWE. So as a, a term for him being a board member, he gets the full rights back to The Rock, because that had been owned by WWE for like 25 years, and now he has full use of it. So he's going to try to market the crap out of that thing now. Well, speaking of marketing, the Visions of Mana producer refuses to change the series' identity for Western audiences. It's best to deliver the game based on the developer's created vision. That's right. So, this is good news because, like, regardless of what you know or think about the Visions of Mana uh, series and, and whatnot uh, property, the situation that we're looking at here is developers are taking note of what happened with Stellar Blade. Developers mm -hmm. are taking note of what's happened with these numerous EA games that microtransact you into oblivion. Developers are taking notice of what happened with Sweet Baby Inc. And they're all the ones that want to make money. The ones that want to make money are coming out and saying, no, 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 no. You don't have to worry about us changing our thing. Like here with the creator of Visions of Mana, it's going to stay uh, in line with their vision. This isn't going to become something like um, Fortnite. It's not going to become something like Overwatch where they just keep piling skins into the, into the market in order to nickel and dime you to death. This is an They're actual trying. game. Right. This is a game that's actually engaged in, in, you know, entertaining you, believe it or not. And once again, we have to give praise to uh, the Stellar Blade uh, creators because the Stellar Blade, uh, Blade director rejects microtransaction promise transactions rather promises will the game will not require players to spend an additional any additional money beyond what they paid for with the original package. That's right. So there you go. If it, as if Stellar Blade couldn't get any better, here we are with them deny, uh, denying using the uh, microtransactions. They're not going to have it anymore. So there you go. Finally, when you buy the game, you own the game. You don't need to like you know buy extra things to do make the really game know? the game. Do, do, do you really own it? Because uh, didn't, didn't a lot of people lose uh, their games that they bought not too long ago, especially with Sony, because Sony decided, oh, we're closing down the markets. Like, what about all the stuff that I paid for? What stuff? <laughs> was well, that that's the kind just of it. I, I believe Stellar Blade comes in a physical um, product. I think so. It comes as a physical product. So this, again, like when you buy it off the shelf, however much you pay for it, you own it. It's not going to... Uh, you don't have to buy extra copies or anything to get more of the game experience. You don't need to buy extra skins. I'm sure there's more that they'll, they'll make available for you, but they won't be like necessary to complete the game or enjoy the game to its like fullest, if you will. Yeah. So, yeah, Stellar Blade still kicking ass, you know, good for them, right? And uh, speaking of kicking ass, we... <laughs> I was What's just that? gonna say just real quick. Remember yeah. back in the day, I know this may be a, a long time ago for some of you people out there, but remember back in the day when like video games had cheat codes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember, uh, remember the back of the day where like you can just like put in like Game Shark or Game Genie and then you can just like literally break the game and it was great. Yeah, well, and you you know, uh that's the fun thing. Helldivers 2 has a joke about that. In order to get the the uh the recovery ship to come and get your guys, yeah. it's like up, down, left, right, down, down, up, up. <laughs> it's, it's it's the joke about that. <laughs> it's so great. The cheat code. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> There's so much in in Hell Divers, and I Spencer's probably got a story coming about uh, coming out about it recently. I guess they caved. So I'm I'm sorry, guys. You know, I I I could have it wrong. Let me know if I have it wrong. But the the word I saw on Twitter today is that they're caving. They're gonna go rainbow. It was good while it lasted, fellas. It was good while it lasted. But that's uh, video games are up in the air again. Like they think Laura Croft's the greatest character that ever existed. They've got uh, microtransactions and Sweet Baby Ink to contend with, and apparently, uh, DEI has a final form in video games. We'll be hearing about that soon so um but uh if you're looking for a victory though looking for a solid slam dunk we've got one right here uh jk rowling took the uh transgender uh law in uh scotland seriously this is a law that said that uh if you say uh, negative things about trans people you can be jailed because you're inciting violence against them or could be interpreted as inciting violence against them. And J.K. Rowling went out and exposed all of these um, trans people who had fallen out with the law in the most deranged and degenerate ways. And uh, what worked out very well for her is that she went and exposed all these people, spoke about how they identify as female and how grotesque they are with it, while making jokes about their appearance, by the way. And Scotland did not uh, respond. They did not jail her for it. Hey, so uh, we're celebrating the fact that uh, someone uh, didn't go to jail in the UK, by the way, for stating uh, reality. Correct. Is that, is that where we're at now? Yep. That's uh, just... I, I might have to check my cards, but is that, is that where we're at in 2024? Yep. That's that's where we're at. See, this is, um, I, I think, one of her. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, J.K. Rowling, she posted things like this, but she posts, uh, I hope every uh, woman in Scotland who wishes to speak up for the reality and importance of biological sex will be reassured by this announcement and trust that all women, irrespective of profile or financial means, will be treated uh, equally under the law. And uh, yeah, they're not criminals. So the government ruled that they, even though they said they were going to put people in jail for this, they're not going to put her in jail for it. Again, it's a, de oh, it's a demonstration. Oh, I get it now. It's, right. It's, it's, it's classism. Okay. So right, it's not exactly. that. So if, if you or me, regular old schmuck Joes over there, or smuck Joes, bruv, if we were over there in the UK and we said the same thing, then we would probably be in cuffs. Like, like you know, if you, if you, for instance, trained a pug dog to salute Hitler and, oh, and get excited. Somebody do that? When you uh, called for the death of a certain religious group. Uh, that might, that could land you in jail if you were not J.K. Rowling. Yes, that's correct. That's why I said in the, in the thumbnail that J.K. Rowling won. It wasn't a victory for you and me. It was J.K. Yeah. Rowling's not going to jail. But like your average I mean, lorry driver probably would go to jail for saying such so, things. Uh, so I might have brought the story up on this one or another show that we did. So I used to be a big fan of uh, Chelsea Football Club, which is the, the uh, England uh, soccer team, right? And if you recall, I think it was about two or three years ago when the whole Ukraine-Russia situation was popping mm. off. And the yep. entire world says, you have to side with the Ukraine. You can't side with Russia whatsoever because they're the bad guys, right? And what the UK did is that what the owner of Chelsea at the time, his name was Roman Ivanovich, he um, got his team, it was his team, seized from him by the UK government because the UK government had decided that he was an ally of Putin. How did they come to this conclusion? It's because he owned a uh, steel company and said that, well, the steel materials that you use could be used for weapons for the Russian government, even though they didn't have any actual evidence to make this correlation whatsoever. And mm -hmm. the only interaction that these two, that uh, the owner had with Putin goes back to 2004 and he didn't exactly have great things to say about him then but their whole view was well you're a russian you're the enemy we're gonna seize your team and sell it to the americans which is exactly what they did so the uk government this is where we're at now in 2024 they took a professional soccer team football if you're over in the uk they took a professional football team from an owner because yeah. he's russian and now not only took the team froze his accounts in the uk all his bank accounts frozen all of his asset accounts completely frozen just seized everything and literally ran him out of the country yeah this is what they mean when they say that they're freezing the assets of russian oligarchs yeah if, if you're wealthy and happen to be ethnic russian congratulations you're a russian oligarch and now you're apparently more nefarious than putin himself 
and bye, you yeah. can't be in our country anymore. <laughs> and, and then we just Amazing. say, oh, he's a, he's an oligarch, so everything we're doing is fine because he's an oligarch. And it's like, oh, okay, just see, seize all this stuff then. And this totally right. won't happen to me here in a few years. <laughs> Well, and, you know, you got Hotep and he says here, uh, UK is totalitarianism. It absolutely is. Like, you yeah. know, we've talked about Count Dankula here just a few minutes ago with his pug dog. Ordinarily, that would have been on America's Home Funny Videos. People would have been like, oh, my, how salacious to teach your dog how to salute a funny mustache man. Mm -hmm. and, and no, no, they threw a man in jail over that. Like, he did time over that, like, for mm -hmm. real. He was and on it, court for a while. Yeah, it was. It's so bizarre to 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 think like a joke, a, a quite obvious, the most non-violent joke. Absolute a pug dog. It can't even breathe, mm -hmm. and, and, <laughs> you know. And doing that landed him jail time. It's amazing. It absolutely blows my mind. You know. Yeah, cryptocurrency. Sure. Yeah, the alternative economy, the parallel economy. Sure. I mean, I. It's only a matter of time before stuff goes sideways with that. That's why we've got to fight for the culture we have. We've got to... Sorry, it's a warm day here and the eclipse has people excited. They survived the eclipse and apparently they're going around I, I, celebrating I see it. Mad Max is happening in, in the background right now. People are just like riding there like more serious. <laughs> That's what it is. The eclipse happened and people just assumed the world was over. So now they've gone about marauding and murdering. It's great. Yeah. yeah. But that, that's a kind a of a fun... Start. That's a, a funny start. story. You yeah. want to make a comedy movie, right? Just make it so that, like, on a day that we have an eclipse, right? You have the power go out in like a small desert town that's isolated. Mm -hmm. So they like it, it just go, happens at the right time when the when the eclipse is like at the apex. So they think it's a sign at the end of the world because they can't like call out yeah. cell phone towers are dead and stuff. And so <laughs> that, that, you've got them thinking the end of the world has happened, and they fall into Mad Max. That would be that, great. I was gonna say that sounds like a hilarious setup for a movie. It's like a post-apocalyptic uh, world, and they're going around just doing all kinds of just like hilarity and like depravity. And then the next thing you know, you realize it's actually not post-apocalypse. They just yeah. assumed that it was <laughs> right, right. Like it's just just a weekend, right? It happens on yeah. a Friday. It's the weekend. This town's isolated. Then Monday, like a school bus returns with their kids or whatever yeah. from like you know. And the parents have been grieving. Part of the reason why they went insane and did all this stuff was because they thought their kids died. In the apocalypse and yep. this <laughs> it can have this huge and it turns out somebody just forgot it was labor day yeah right exactly <laughs> and uh, you can even have that guy walk out of the bus like for god's sakes it was labor day <laughs> <laughs> what's and then, and then, wrong with then, you and, people <laughs> and then they're like they're the force to like pick up all their pizzas like oh sorry i didn't mean to shiv you in the heart ups and daisy <laughs> yeah right they're like hey man let's get your leg back on there yeah. like, yeah. i forgot i was a doctor yeah <laughs> Like, man, we're, we're going to go look back at this and we're going to laugh in a few years. <laughs> yeah, right. We're all going to remember that time we killed the English teacher. That's going to yeah. real knee slapper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, that, if you want to have your horror movies that don't have like make any sense whatsoever, you've got one right there. Just, you know, uh, a regular old grindhouse thing of just people yep. going crazy because they thought the world ended. <laughs> people literally went insane over a mild misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, like, yeah, we just, look what happened when the power went out in New York there in the late 80s, 70s, something like some point the power went out for a while and went nuts and stuff like that. So that's that's my favorite part about this whole concept is it's happened. It's mm. it's happened in a really tiny way. It's happened. So that's uh, but there again, like speaking of what's actually happened, we got severely derailed. But uh, J.K. Rowling is not going to go to jail because she's Mad Max or something. I'm not really sure, but uh, she's she's too powerful something to be put bites. into. She's too powerful <laughs> to be put into normal human containment, apparently. Mm -hmm. So they're they are not going. They're going to let her roam free like the Hulk until they can find hey, maybe, suitable maybe containment. She can... Maybe she can fight that Taylor Swift demon that's just floating around. Uh, yeah, to Swift do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But uh, that, so there it is. So, you know, congratulations to J.K. Rowling for being wealthy and influential enough to not go to jail for violating the law. Now, this is going to be interesting to see if she speaks up for anybody, particularly men who end up um, legally constrained or bind by this whole, um, you know, trans rights sort of situation. Yeah, best of luck with that one, I guess. I I think that was um 
yeah i think that was wasn't that heroes there was an eclipse wasn't that heroes there was an eclipse and people it, got it sounds like it was hero there was a few shows like that i think heroes might have been one of them do you remember a show called alphas because alphas yes. was kind of another one yep. similar to that too yep. that, that one i was kind of disappointed didn't get enough time to go because they had something there but i think it only got like one and a it half got two seasons. seasons it got two seasons and the second one was just like hurry up and get it over with you know uh, yeah, alphas was, like, oh, was okay we're, we're done here but it was one of those early diversity of uh, effort ones so it had like a yeah. lot of like forced drama in it in order to be like oh racism is a thing and people discriminate yeah. against the autism kid that can see digital transmissions and mm -hmm. it's like okay thanks you know but it was it was really well thought out it just didn't get a chance to breathe you're right it's one of those early netflix originals right well no, that's, that's always how they portray people with autism and in, in televisions it's always like oh this guy's like honestly really super smart like they don't want to show like the autistic kid who like doesn't bathe properly because you know that never goes over well with you know your target audience so well, I mean, again, like we've had this with characters who had like uh, a sort of like social problem. I wouldn't say autism and before uh, outwardly anyway. But we've had characters like that and they've been great characters to to deal with. Um, I'm trying to think of the guy that was like um, always making the noises in Police Academy. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the sound effects radar. Guy. That's that's how that's what, we, that's what we always refer to him as. Oh, the sound effects guy from from uh, Police Academy. Yeah, Radar. We, we Radar is a guy that has Tourette's, a form of Tourette's. To my knowledge, that's a form of Tourette's, where you make sound effects uh, when you're thinking of them, rather than... Uh, it's a form of it. I don't know the whole deal of it, but I believe, anyway. Then, they, then you have, um, you have uh, a couple of guys in um, M.A.S.H. who are also, likewise, a little socially different that are getting on. And, you know, again, like, it's not, I just feel bad that, like, they just isolated that character in Alpha so much. But just like, look, guys, he has autism and people are weird around him because he has autism. Get it? He's weird because he has autism. Get it? Get it? Yeah. Get it? It's, ugh. I hate it so much. But, like, they were all therapy buddies. That was my favorite part. It reminded me of Anger Management with um, Adam Sandler and Nicholas yeah, okay. or Jack Nicholson. That's that, that's a reminder because they were all therapy groups. That's that's what brought them together. Is they were all therapy uh, therapy clients of the main doctor. And yeah. he's like, "Would you like to fight crime along with your inner demons?" <laughs> I love that. That was so good. <laughs> I do like how the whole setup that that movie was basically just based on a mild misunderstanding on an airplane. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, Hotep says, remember the NYC electrical blue, uh, blue light that would be a bad idea that people got superpowers. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of that. Oh, eccentric banana member of the channel has made it. Welcome aboard. We're just talking about how JK Rowling is so powerful and influential enough that she won't go to jail for violating a law, but you or I probably would in good old Scotland. Mm-hmm. Yep, so don't don't say anything bad about the rainbow people in the uk you'll probably go to jail unless you're muslim because for some reason they just get away with with that stuff there well they just they brush it off they're like oh it's those silly people from away they're very different you know they're yeah adorably they're, they're, different they're, they're here to, to culturally enrich you with, with their pointy things so so um we do have uh something fresh off the the desk here from jv augustine this one, this one I haven't heard too much about. Um, rumor, Acme versus Coyote is shelved to make way for a new Looney Tunes movie. Um, I have heard that this is true, that they did not have confidence in the Coyote, uh, Coyote versus Acme really hitting home with families. You know, it's, it wouldn't be necessarily an adult movie, but it wouldn't be a kid's movie either. It's kind of caught in that twilight where like only like 25 year olds would really get it who are dialed in on, on court drama, I guess. So I guess, it, I guess from what, again, it hasn't been out, but from what I've read about it, uh, for people talking about it, it's very funny, but it's very much like a, a Harvey Birdman, attorney at law, um, better call Saul, very like court related legal trouble jokes kind of stuff. So this is probably why they're going to try and do something a little more broad, like, you know, probably, hopefully not Space Jam 3, but oh, please, uh, please. you never know. LeBron's <laughs> out there. But, uh, but please yeah, do not the new... give LeBron James any more ideas about terribly uh, written animated movies with cartoons. Please don't. 
So which new Looney Tunes show is this? The last one I knew about was the the Looney Tunes show, which was um, they were like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck were roommates. They lived next door to Yosemite Sam and um, Elmer Fudd, and it was just sort of a situational comedy kind of show. It so, wasn't the old skit stuff. I'll be honest with you. The last time I've watched any kind of cartoons of this variety was when uh, Cartoon Network was playing Hanna Barbera cartoons from the seventies back in like nineteen ninety four. But I do have to have a little bit of context of this one because you remember when it was originally canceled. Uh, one of the the biggest, I guess, hiccups with David Zaslav's um, co- way he's been running Warner Brothers over the last few years is the fact that people have been very very angry about how he's handled the animation stuff because apparently he's canceled a lot of animated uh, shows except for Velma for weird reasons but he's kind of canceled a lot of animated stuff and people have been very very furious but hearing essentially what is going on here it seems like they're trying to placate to older fans who know who these characters are who are more familiar with these characters while trying to also placate the kids and look it's one of those things with animation where it's like you can't really be one foot in one foot out with this type of stuff it's like if children is like your target audience make it for kids it's like don't try to make it for adults or stunted growth adults who are still in the cartoons at this stage of their life and also try to make it a kid's thing too because if that's the justification i honestly don't blame them from scrapping this whole thing it seems like Mm. it was a project that really didn't have an audience or at least didn't know what his audience was yeah uh, hotep over on x says uh, i hoped i had great hope for zaslav yeah yeah well You know, just be prepared to be disappointed. There's always that DEI grading that they have to keep up now in order to get loans from the central bank. That's just how it goes now. They have to keep a certain amount of diversity going, and it has to be that blatant propaganda-driven diversity in order to keep that delicate little percentage just high enough. Oh, yeah. That's Uh, how they get you. So this this must be the Looney Tunes um, show that's out right now that Eccentric Banana's talking about. yeah, it's it's apparently it's like the original ones. It's out. okay, so it's back to skits, the little isolated things again. Good. That sitcom is a really weird one. It was really weird. Lola Bunny being this obsessed stalker character was very uncomfortable. But uh, yeah, hopefully they will not be uh, making a uh, LeBron James movie. The the Looney T- the trouble with making a Looney Tunes characters movie is is it's not really the ensemble cast doesn't quite fit together like a team that's what space jam was kind of like showing us it was a joke in space jam is that like you have foghorn leghorn and speedy gonzalez working together and that was the comedy of it you know but the when you draw back and try to do like a muppet movie with them they don't fit together very well for that situation it's why the sitcom show was so odd is that they weren't being looney tunes they were just being I don't know, just dudes, you know, with a lisp and a carrot addiction. That was, that's it. Yeah. And so the whole, the whole thing that they can put off with this is maybe a Bugs Bunny movie where you have Bugs Bunny getting lost and you do like some not racist uh, Alibaba Thousand Tales story that he had uh, back in the Looney Tunes cartoons where he had to tell that prince a thousand stories. You remember, remember that with the Looney Tunes? I don't remember it sounds familiar but yeah it was just like three or four episodes right but it wasn't like it was just like bugs bunny being trapped with this prince and being forced with like a, oh, that sword point to tell yeah. him stories yeah so it was always yeah. him outsmarting a arabian version of yosemite sam mm-hmm. so but uh that that that's the best they could probably do bugs bunny getting lost in trance oh bugs bunny and dracula they could do a scooby-doo thing where um, Bugs Bunny has to survive Dracula, where he's not, he doesn't believe in Dracula. That would be a funny thing. You got Bugs just seeing a man transform into a, into a bat in front of him, and he's like, nah, mirror tricks. Mirrors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mirrors. Yeah, exa- exactly. It was an abomination. Everyone, everyone should know that. Scream that from the highest mountains with the Ricola man. I don't know why he set himself up for that. It's like you're already like notoriously known for being second best to Michael Jordan and on the basketball court. Now you're second base best in making Space Jam movies. It's like maybe why, that's why what you, he wants. Maybe that's what LeBron that wants. He just wants to be second best Michael Jackson. That's what he wants to be, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan, rather. Michael Jordan. <laughs> that's Sorry. even better. <laughs> I get my Michaels mixed up. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they look alike, so I mean, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you bet. Indistinguishable, those two. Yeah, I can't. identical. Especially with the Lego man, click off, click on nose, you know? Oh, yeah. But uh, Leslie Tarkin, member of the channel here, is look crying. James is perfect for Looney Tunes. He's Looney. Yeah. Lucy, maybe. It's pretty yeah. Lucy. The butt cheeks, yeah. Yeah. Well, he is they, known for being at those Diddy parties, so. So there you go. Now the speculation going around about that, that, um, uh, oh my gosh, the uh, coyote. There it is. See, I, I, coyote I know. Versus Acme thing. Yeah. I, I see. I, I know him as Wiley Coyote. So I want to call him Wiley, but the article said coyote and my brain's like, oh, hold on. I got to say it right. Or people won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, apparently that the rumor mill going around is that. That was shelved for a more family-friendly, broader appeal kind of show. Uh, especially, I, I have to wonder, it's a legal-based movie, like a joke about a courtroom drama. I have to wonder if She-Hulk maybe spoiled the basket on this one. Like, they looked at She-Hulk and they were like, maybe we ought to not do law comedy, you know? Because they can't, they can't admit it wasn't the, the, the horrible writing team and the dumb Sex in the City vibe. They just have to look at that legal drama thing and go, oh, that's not for us, mm-hmm. you know? I wonder. Uh, that, that's a little too too hot for TV for us. Yeah, apparently. But uh, speaking of too hot for TV, you reviewed Monkey Man, and quite a few people didn't quite like what you had to say about it, Jacob. Yeah, apparently there, there was some pushback here, and it comes from a couple of communities. And ironically enough, not the community that you would think. Um, so a little bit of backstory here. This is a film that is uh, directed, written, and starred by Dev Patel, who's the person in the picture there. You may remember him from Slug Dog Millionaire. He was on the UK TV show Skins for a couple of seasons. So he, he's and been then around. And he grew for- up. <laughs> exactly. Bye bye a lot. But you know, so he's he's in charge mostly of this film. This film is also produced by Jordan Peele, and Jordan Peele, as you know, is a guy who has pretty much gotten over in Hollywood over the last uh, could you say decade up to this point about doing these movies that somehow will manage to infuse a lot of social justice messaging into the film so it's like it's not just you know he's doing horror movies he's doing horror movies with a message and when you heard he was going to be a producer of this movie, I probably should have seen this coming because what you have here is that I think it's basically a John Wick ripoff film that has a little bit of uh, social messaging and tied into it. Now, what is the premise here? You have a guy called the monkey man and the, the lore of this movie. So if you're going into this, you know nothing about this. There's, there's two things happening here. One is that this film pushes very heavily Hinduism if you don't know the details of the Hindu uh, religion, Hinduism is a uh, religion that's been around for a very, very long time. And they, there's, there's put it this way, there's millions of quote unquote deities in uh, Hinduism, which may or may not be demons, but that's for a whole other conversation. But just in the context of this movie, one of the deities that they follow is one called like, like Ramadan, which is one of a half man, half monkey type creature. So that's kind of what the, the premise of the film is all about. And then uh, Dev Patel takes up this lore. The whole concept here is that he uh, was, him and his mother was attacked like 20 something years ago. His mother was then raped and then brutally murdered in front of him. Uh, one of the the villains here who's just like cartoonishly evil, which kind of is a trope in, in Indian movies, but uh, raped his mother in front of him and then poured uh, gasoline all over her body and then lit her on fire. And then the kid tried to put out the flames on his mother's dying body and then burned his hand severely so of course uh understanding that concept he wants a little bit of revenge i think that's understandable right but in Mm -hmm. the context of trying to get revenge he tries to uh break through this um criminal organization where this guy is because he goes out there and parties with these you know totally not eastern european uh sex trafficked women and in the course of doing this he ends up uh trying to kill the guy he fails miserably and then he kind of goes into exile and in the course of being in exile he comes across this tribe and i know this sounds ridiculous but this is real a tribe of ancient indigenous transgender warriors 
So, <laughs> so yeah, you probably weren't expecting us to go uh, there, but the, the, apparently this is a real group of individuals in India. And what you see here is that the, this a group that's called what? What exactly was the name of this group? Real quick, if I can just find it uh, off the uh, review here, real quick. They did have a name for these people, but I, I can't look it. So I'm pretty sure you guys can find it on here. But yeah, so these individuals worship a half man half a woman type deity that's in hinduism which looks shiva. a lot mm -hmm. shiva I, right i don't think it's shiva i think it's another one like Shiva's obviously like one of the big ones but i think this one specifically what was a another one i'll have to uh find this out I'm looking at my review here i couldn't uh find the the exact name of this group of people but i'll, I'll shoot it to you in just a second but uh so because of that they believe that you know by worshiping this deity that by honoring it by becoming men wearing humiliating feminized clothes that they're somehow giving praise and veneration to this deity it sounds like a lot like a modern day hollywood humiliation ritual so you may just find a little bit of the origin of this story and they they i'm not even lying here this sounds ridiculous but it's true at one point in the movie, he goes through a training montage with the trans with the transgender people, right? So he's literally like sitting there learning how to. They teach him how to fight. They literally teach him how to fight one on one combat. We're gonna teach you how to fight like a woman. <laughs> exactly. And, oh my god. And there's the thing: like they all look like Thai lady boys in the context of the film, but they're so supposed this to be becomes like becomes ever more relevant. How <laughs> exactly. about that? So they, they become like real, uh, okay, somebody finally uh, shot it over to me. So they're called the Hira. The, this is the name of, of this group of people. And they're, like I said, an ancient uh, transgender uh, group. Because at one point in the movie, like right before we introduced this group, there's like one of these like news reports in passing. And they're talking about, it's like, oh, and today the, the president, who's like the villain of the movie, is like, the president was found uh, attacking this group of transgendered people it's somewhere in, in the forest somewhere. And it's like, that seems very odd to just like throw that in there in the context of this movie and not like mean something. It's like, we're talking about a story of like a guy trying to get revenge for his mother who was brutally murdered in front of him. And all of a sudden we're mentioning a news report about transgender people. Well, lo and behold, they actually become a big part of this film later on. And when he finally does get the rematch against the guy that he's uh, trying to kill, all of a sudden, guess who shows up? It's the trans people, and they're all wearing their full warrior garb, and they go on and brutally murder uh, most of these guys. Um, I, I guess you can say his crew, his cannon father crew, just start brutally slaughtering these people to show that you know they're not uh, poor, defenseless uh, transgender people, even though they're literally living in a hole in the forest because that's the only way they can keep the man from killing them. So it looks like they're trying to portray Jacob, them as Jacob, victims wait, and not victims. Wait. Do they what? have to dilate the forest hole? Oh God, I I don't know. I I don't know. It, it sounds bad. I I hope not. But this is kind of like where we're at here, and yeah. So the, the film just goes completely off the rails here here at this point, and then it just becomes uh, Dev Patel going one on one with this kind of like Hindu cult leader, and they basically just stab each other until one of them dies, and then that is the the, the end of the movie. That that was that was that's the film. So the film, the message the film is trying to portray here is that it's trying to make social commentary in a John Wick style movie about the Indian caste system, about the treatment of Muslims in India, because that was another thing that they also put in there, and then the treatment of transgender people in India as well. So if you're going in there watching the trailer, you think, oh, this seems like a cool action movie I could spend a couple hours watching. Uh, don't, because it's actually not. It's basically a John Wick uh, re a remake and re a ripoff with a bunch of social messaging in between. So if, if, if you're not expecting to uh, sit here and, and enjoy a little bit of, you know, uh, progressive propaganda in your face, probably skip this movie, but pro probably uh, skip this one. Yeah, I so mean, that that's hilarious, honestly, the way the way that you paint the picture of these. Uh, I just think of these like little like four foot ten um, uh, lady. Bo oh, no. Yeah. So this is what they look like in real life. Now, they looked very similar to this uh, in the movie, but obviously they tried to give him a little bit of a more warrior garb in the film, too, because they, they had to also tr betray him as, like, badasses, too, in the movie. They couldn't just be, like, complete, like, victims. Like, oh, no, the government's trying to kill us. It's like, no, but we can defend ourselves still, even though we just complained about the fact that we couldn't defend ourselves, like, 40 minutes ago. So, 
And, and you yeah. can hear like Patel and he did like a red carpet interview about this too. And he, he was so excited about being able to portray this story here because it was like, well, you know, if you look at, you know, the Hindu uh, culture in, in India, it's like, they've always acknowledged a third gender. So they're, they're way more far progressed than we are here in the U S and in the UK. It's like, just just because trannies have been a thing longer in India than the the developed world doesn't exactly mean that that's a good thing. Like I said, you're literally making a movie complaining about the Indian caste system, but it's like, hey, but they got transgenders though. Isn't that a positive? It's like, is it really a positive? Which is a All product considered- of the caste system. <laughs> literally, it's a product of the caste system. Yeah, so the, the, this movie doesn't know what, what it wants to be. Like, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. And, and yeah, like I said, I, I know the way that I described it, it sounds completely asinine and insane. And all I have to say is that that is exactly what this movie is. So a Jordan Peele movie. That's asinine. You don't say what about, yeah. how about that? But, uh, you know, speaking of asinine things, we have the daredevil born again, set photos confirm the series will adapt storyline where Punisher confronts the police officers for using his logo. Yeah, so this has been a long time coming because obviously the people who run Marvel now are, I don't know if you know this, they may be identified as like leftist progressive type people. So they're probably the type of people who claim that Trump is not their president. And they've had a long standing problem with uh, the character of the Punisher because the Punisher is a guy who's notoriously known for fighting and murdering criminals, uh, mob bosses. It's like, it really doesn't matter. It's like, if you're a bad guy, he just wants to shoot you in the face. So whether it's random street thugs or it's the Irish mob or the Italian mob or whatever the case may be, like that's kind of what he is. And on one side, they don't like the fact that they don't like, well, why are you killing you know, these innocent street thugs? They're just trying to provide for their families. Like Vigilante justice is bad. But then on the other side, they look at it, it's like, oh, we noticed that there's a lot of police officers and military people who use the Punisher logos on their on their car details. And don't they know that this is a uh, vigilante? They shouldn't be uh, celebrating and praising this character because he represents everything that's bad about you guys. And that's kind of like the, the left-wing echo chamber view of the Punisher. So over the course of the last few years they've had a serious problem with uh people who they don't like liking the punisher they even went so far in the comics that they changed the logo of the punisher so that they can identify though this is our punisher logo you guys can have that other one we're going to change it now they changed it back eventually once they realized that wasn't going to work very well because the punisher logo is so iconic you can't actually change it and expect to sell tickets or uh, well, books I do need to note, Jacob, they did destroy the Punisher. There is currently no Punisher in the Marvel Universe. They had Mm -hmm. another guy show up and try to take the mantle, then they canceled it. At this very moment, uh, uh, Frank Castle is not the Punisher. He's on another world. His wife came back, uh, sold, sold all of his stuff, tied him to a post, and divorced him. And they just they just completely removed all of his reasoning, cursed him out for being a, a fighter for his family, choosing to take the deaths of his family and stop crime because of it. Uh, and, and then also uh, reduced him to a weirdo on a planet taking care of other people's children on another world. So that's, that's what the Punisher's fate was to try and chase people who like guns away from him. And now you can expect the Netflix, the, the Disney Plus show, rather, to take this approach and, and just completely, you, you wait, most of the, I guarantee you, if they're not involved in a drug, drug dealing gang, it'll be some type of child sex ring that everybody who wears this is, is a part of. That'll be what they do in order to just really poison it. Yeah, that's, so that's what they're gonna do. Then you know that's exactly what they're gonna do. And they kind of alluded to this. What was it? The the Punisher series, the Netflix series that they did somewhere in between, like season two and season three of the Netflix Daredevil, where the focus of you know the bad guys is like it wasn't just like I said, mob bosses and street thugs. It was oh, it was this whole his former like military guy, and it was technically the military that was the bad guy there. So even it, it's even bled into the Netflix series if you remember that one from a few years ago, but. And here, what we're seeing here is that it's going to be the cops wearing the Punisher logo who are going to be the bad guys in this series. And then Frank's going to have to come along and correct, you know, these police officers who are using his likeness. He doesn't appreciate that completely devoid of the fact that wasn't Frank Castle like a former military guy? Like, isn't that kind of like a crucial point of his entire story arc? 
So why is all of a sudden he's going to be completely like butthurt and, and, and complaining about the fact that other military guys are like wearing like his logo where he has to like, oh, uh, there's even like a point in the comics where he has to like lecture a guy talk about you're not you're not qualified or you're not something to, to, to wear this logo because, you know, you'll understand like what it stands for. It's essentially these writers uh, having their melodrama bleed out into the comic books. And now this is making it to the Disney plus series. So keep in mind with this Disney plus yeah. series, a show that shot nine episodes and then scrapped it halfway in because they realized it was a complete mess. And now they're starting from scratch. They're still putting this in the series. Yeah. And this comes like a couple of weeks after we also heard that there's supposed to be another episode of this Daredevil series where there's going to be some kind of trans group that's going to be involved in here. And obviously there's going to be a big uh, lecture about trans rights and about the LGBTQ in this story as well. So it's like, dude, what, what are we doing here with, with this series? Like, well, honestly, we're just burning money at this point. We're just absolutely burning money. I don't know how anyone can think that, that any way, shape or form, this is going to be a success. This is just completely asinine from top to bottom yeah he was a marine obviously yeah writers is a loose term uh try again that's right that's what you were calling it right jacob it was uh daredevil try again or was that josh <laughs> i think it might have been josh and daredevil josh try again. yeah daredevil yeah. try again yeah and that's that's what it is really though but they've they've failed already because again like I'll, I'll scroll back up to the the twitter post here of the this the set photos this this is quite obviously you can see it where it's dripping down meant to look demented it's meant to look like a uh, a warped um evil version of the punisher thing so when you first look at this stuff in the trailer you're going to get the impression that this is a bad group of people this is not our heroic punisher that we have seen and i just have to ask like what does this have to do with the daredevil like, I, I, shouldn't this be a Punisher season three thing? But what that tells me, being stuffed in Daredevil Try Again, is that they're not confident enough to for this to carry in a Punisher series. That they couldn't have a subplot of the Punisher being conflicted over police using his symbolism and maybe methodologies. They couldn't do that. They didn't feel it was strong enough to run with as a B plot, even in their story. So they had to run it as a C plot in the daredevil try again series and that's how weak they think it is to begin with but quite obviously they can't sleep at night without addressing this very important thing yeah it, this has been going on for well over a decade now so this is an issue that bothers these people so much and this is why they tried to uh co-opt the logo they tried to remove the logo that didn't work and they just killed off the character entirely because they absolutely despise what he stands for and they absolutely despise the fact that people who they do not like politically are a fan of this character and this is how petty these people are yeah, and that's and that's again like this is the big takeaway for for me about this is that they are definitely not going to give you a better uh, story than what they probably had cooked up in the original eight episodes of uh, Born Again, uh, what they had to like put on ice. I now that I'm hearing this, and now of course that Iger has been like reinforced in his position because we have that going around too, ladies and gentlemen. We'll close the, the stream out with that. Um, now that we've heard about this, that Iger is going to be, um, staying in his position. He says, infusing messaging as a sort of number one priority in our films and TV shows is not what we're up to, but what did we just see? What did we just see in that Punisher mm -hmm. thing? So that's what tells me is that it wasn't political enough. That's why they scrapped it. It wasn't political enough. Yeah, because now we're adding transgender storylines, and now we're adding rants about the police officers and the military. So it's mm -hmm. like, this is truly the question that we have to ask. It's like, what did they see about the series after nine episodes that they filmed that they felt like they had to scrap the entire thing? Like, is it honestly because the show was so bad that they thought that there's no way we can release this and save our brand? Or did they really think that, you know what, we don't like the correction of this one because you guys aren't getting political enough with this sort of way. We're not really a, a sticking it to our political enemies the way that we probably should be. So we're going to go ahead and just redo this whole thing. So like, what, what really happened here? That should be the big question. 
Right. And, and that's, that's what I'm curious about now that I see what Bob Iger's done after being like assured in his position. So he's been real careful about his messaging since uh, this whole question of who's going to run, excuse me, not even running things, having Peltz and Perlman on the board. That's the, that was the big secret about all this vote. It wasn't even to make Peltz and Perlman the leaders of the board. It was just giving them a seat on it. And they were having mm -hmm. this big meltdown. So that just tells you just how flimsy thin this whole thing is. But again, now we have this right here. Uh, as soon as Iger gets permission to stay in his position, guess what happens? He goes out and he announces this crap right here. He goes out and he says, by the way, Lady Silver Surfer, Lady Silver Surfer, congratulations, everybody. We're going to do Female Silver Surfer for reasons I can't explain. We're going to tell you that the character doesn't matter, so we can do whatever we want with it. But we're going to tell you this is also a victory for women. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what happened here was that you know they they remember a couple of months ago they tested the waters with this announcement that hey we might make the thing a woman and we might gender swap the thing and they got massive pushback on that right because there's a lot of implications about you know the thing's character his race his origin all that other stuff and they were just going to gender swap and it was like okay okay so they pushed back on the thing so we won't do that but we will gender swap uh silver surfers like we're getting a gender swap in this series whether you want it or not bigots like so we're going to change this whole thing up and all i can think of when i hear this is that you have to understand going back to 2017 they spent 71 billion dollars acquiring 20th century fox and the fact that they were getting uh control of the fantastic four in the mcu was a selling point of that massive deal so they spent 71 billion dollars to acquire 20th century fox so that they can do this to the fantastic four and we're supposed to be excited now Let's be, let's be honest, this is what their the third mainstream try at a Fantastic Four movie. Has any of them really been that good? Has any of them been good? We do have a super chat, though. Oh, right here. This is uh, for 2000. We do Rose? not know that currency. Uh, W's for 2000 W's. Thank you for the W's. Uh, who the F is Shadowheart and why did she rank 10? Yeah, well, again, uh, Baldur's Gate is apparently the most important video, more important than Pokemon. Apparently, if you go back to the beginning of the stream, we talked about the BAFTA Awards and uh, the voting and how Laura Croft is the number one most iconic character ever, not Red Guy or Blue Hedgehog, but uh, you know, who would have guessed? Thanks for the 2000 W's. I don't know. I'm an American. The only place that matters is where I live. Everywhere else doesn't exist. It's just a Wikipedia page. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. A little bit. But <laughs> if, you live, if you don't live in America, you don't really matter. So. <laughs> yeah, right. If you're not an American, you don't matter. That, 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 I, should, I, that should curl things up a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's going to fix foreign relations for sure. Yep. America only. You understand? America only. <laughs> I totally yeah. saved that one. But uh it, oh oh the won. It's a nor it's a Korean currency. My apologies. My apologies. Uh, I'm about Thank to say you. if you're if you're sending us North Korean won, uh oof, don't you have bigger problems to deal with right now? Yeah, it's not North <laughs> Korean, it's best Korea. You see, it's okay. best Korea's. Always watching. Thanks, Dizwiz. Thank you very much. Um Marvel's Fantastic Four casts inventing Anna Star. This is funny because she's more people know her from Ozark, apparently. Um, so, I never watched uh, Ozark, so I mean, I guess that's a thing. Julie, uh, Julia Garner as a female version of Silver Surfer. And the thing, I, she just looks like somebody. I, this face is a man's face. And I thought it was Jude Law for a little while, but there's no split in her chin. And I just, it's just like, you ever, you ever see a woman's face? It's like, that's a, that's like a dude, a male actor's face run through the face swapper app, mm -hmm. run through the gender swapper it, app. It, it's a very plain Jane type of face. So yeah, it's hard to, I guess, craft exactly what it would be. It reminds me a lot of Florence Pugh because she has kind of like the same, like, feature, uh, how, how should I phrase this one? Uh, feature problems. I think mean, that, that, I mean, that sells it. Well, it's it's the brow structure that gets me is that it just at first thing I thought it was like, oh, that's Jude Law in a wig. But no butt chin. That's the thing. Is, is, Jude she, Law British? is, a big old is she British? Because that explains a lot. I don't think so. I think she's, um, you know, American. Um, I, I wouldn't know. 
Uh, Julia Gardner. Let's find out. Uh, she's an American. Okay. Well, yep. that, that's that's unfortunate. Well, I, yeah. Well, again, I mean, like, I, I, I just, I, even Lady Silver Surfer. You have to understand, this woman is going to be naked. This, all, that's it. That's she's just chrome naked. They're probably going to shave her head. I think that's wise because she's got very short hair, well, so she can recover her look very quick. Here's you know? the thing: Are they really going to do that though, or is it going to be like, no, that's too male gagey if we just put her naked? So let's let's give her some kind of like like female suit where she looks silver, but she doesn't have to. They'll they'll find some kind of way that the CGI of that because I mean it's, it's modern day uh, Marvel and Disney. They're not going to do that. Maybe like, keep in mind this uh, Elizabeth Olsen when she did what was it uh the second Avengers movie uh Age of Ultron that was like ten years ago she complained about the suit that she was wearing in that film claiming that it was too revealing as compared yeah. to what Scarlet Witch has worn in some of the comics which is way more revealing so yeah I, I don't I don't see uh, Disney making that that leap uh when it comes to that. It's true. It's true. I mean, I, I can't imagine them putting her in like a suit. It seems very strange to put the Silver Surfer in a suit. The The implication is that it is a uh, genitalia-less uh, exterior, chrome exterior. And that's that's the implication of the Silver Surfer's form. But I, it seems very strange to think of the Silver Surfer wearing a costume. I I struggle with that. But my guess is, is they'll probably shave her bald to bring her as close to Norrin Rad as they can while saying it's still Shala Ball instead of that way they don't get that. If you don't know, uh, Julia will be playing Shala Ball, not Nova, not uh, Norrin Rad. But they're probably going to see again. She wears her hair short. So that's what I think they're going to do is they're going to shave her bald. To bring her as close to Norrin Rad because she can recover her look very quickly within, you know, six months. She can have her hair grown back out again. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And so th this whole thing is not going to be. So you're doing um, do like the Karen Gillian thing with her. Yeah, I think so. I think they're going to go bald, fully chrome naked lady. And they're just they're going to shame you for finding her attractive. If you do, uh, I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna say, so, at least you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> right. I don't I don't find her particularly. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it ain't no woman. That's a man. Yeah, it's, it's a little. She, this, I know why they chose her. I know why they chose her. You know, they're not. They're not putting, um, oh no, Sydney Sweeney in as uh, the yeah. silver surfette, you know? So, yeah, she looks like Woody Harrelson. Ah, there it is. It's Woody Harrelson run through the gender swapper app. There you go. Not as good of an actor, though. Not as good of an actor. But uh, she she does remind me of like a like a modern day Julie Garland in a sense, too. With kind of like her whole get up there. Yeah, lesbian bald silver surfer. Yeah, uh, you know what? They they didn't do anything with Nebula at the end of Guardians. Guess what? I have a feeling. I have a feeling that Nebula is going to be um, the silver surfette's um, buddy. You know, you silver go. insufferable. Yeah, they're gonna ride off into a bad dragon sunset, if you will. But uh, <laughs> silver and silver. <laughs> we have run into the end of the show, though. So this has been Monday Rewind. You're brought up to date on Monday and what's going on today as of right now. Um, Jacob, you have a show tomorrow, though. Um, yeah, I actually have a show tomorrow. Episode 94 of the Barroom Podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about a couple of the names we dropped here on the show. Uh, the Rock, we're going to talk about his whole thing and kind of recap what happened at uh, WrestleMania over the weekend. Uh, Sydney Sweeney, who we just mentioned a minute ago, did a recent photo shoot, which has a lot of people questioning where she has finally sold her soul to join the club. And we'll go over some of those photos. Uh, it's very, very eye-opening and occultish. And speaking of eye-opening and occultish, uh, Justin Timberlake just did a music video called no angels and it's probably the most demonic luciferian thing you've probably ever seen in your entire life and we're gonna decode that whole thing as well so that's all coming up tomorrow on the barroom podcast and uh make sure you come back on wednesday to check out season two of zero one
Oh, yeah. It's probably the, my craziest intro I've ever made. All right. So be there yes. on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Brand Check spanking new intro, guys. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And that's just a, that's just a taste of it, by the way. It's just a little bit, little oh, bit yeah. of it. So we. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ooh la la photo. Yeah, of course. It's Sydney Sweeney, you know, almost from every angle. She's ooh la la. But uh, we are at the end of the show and uh, we'll catch you all on Wednesday for uh, Zero One Season 2. We'll see you then.